हेलो आई एम फैमी द मैमन लेट्स बिगिन चैप्टर वन प्लांट लाइफ लीफ द मेजर फोटोसिंथेटिक पार्ट अ लीफ इज अ फ्लैट लिटरल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द स्टेम कंटेनिंग ग्रीन पिगमेन क्लोरोफिल विच बेयर्स बर्ड इन इट्स एक्सेल द चीफ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ द लीफ आर नंबर वन इट इज यूजली ग्रीन इन कलर बट देर कैन बी लीव हैविंग ग्रीन और नॉन ग्रीन पैचिस नंबर टू आफ्टर जर्मिनेशन ऑफ सीड्स द फर्स्ट लीव्स अराइज फ्रॉम द कॉटिलीडर नंबर थ्री लीव्स ऑफ टाइकोट मोनोकोट प्लांट्स आर स्लाइटली डिफरेंट इन स्ट्रक्चर नंबर फोर द मेन फंक्शंस ऑफ लीफ आर फोटोसिथेसिस ट्रांसपिरेशन एंड गैसियस एक्सचेंज एंड नंबर फाइव लीव्स में भी सिंपल और कंपाउंड इन नेचर पार्ट्स ऑफ लीव लीव इज अटैच टू द स्टेम बाई पेटियोल एंड ब्रॉड ग्रीन पैट ऑफ द लीव इज कॉल्ड लैमिना The parts of leaf are blade, margin, tip, petiole, midrib, vein, sheath, stipule, and leaf axil. The design made by veins in a leaf is called the leaf venation. If the veins are parallel to one another, the venation is called parallel venation. and if the design is neck like on both the sides of the midrib then the venation is called reticulate venation there are two types of leaf number 1 simple leaf and number 2 compound leaf now what do you mean by phyllotaxy the arrangement of leaves on the stem or branches is called phyllotaxy phyllotaxy may be of three different types number 1 alternate phyllotaxy number 2 opposite phyllotaxy and number 3 whorled phyllotaxy as shown in the figure normal functions of the leaf number 1 photosynthesis leaves contain chlorophyll that traps solar energy from sunlight and helps in the formation of glucose from water and carbon dioxide this process is called photosynthesis and the equation is shown on the screen gaseous exchange stomata are minute openings present mostly on the lower surface of the leaves these openings are surrounded by guard cells the stomata of the leaves helps in the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide during respiration number 3 transpiration plants lose water in the form of water vapor through the stomata of the leaves this gives a cooling effect to the plant body more transpiration takes place through the lower surface of the leaves circulation also occurs in plant special functions of the leaf are as follows number 1 trapping of insects the leaves of insectivorous plants are modified to form specialized structures like pitcher or sac like bladder etc these structures help in trapping insects and provide food for the plant example pitcher plant bladderwort venus fly trap etc to mechanical support the leaflets of certain plants are modified to form thin thread like coil structures called tendrils the tendrils coil around an object and help the plants to climb up example sweet pea the main purpose of the tendril is to support the plant keep it upright so it receives enough sunlight number 3 flotation the lamina and petiole of leaves of certain plants have cells filled with air that help the plant to float in water example water hyacinth which is an aquatic plant number 4 protection In some plants the leaves are modified into spine like structures which provide protection to the plants from grazing animals. The example is prickly pear. In cactus leaves are modified into spines to avoid loss of water. Number 5 storage of food. In plants like onion membranous structure called scale leaves become thick and flush fleshy by storing up water and food. Scale leaves are common in parasites, saprophytes, underground stem etc. They are found in asparagus also. In many cases where the scale leaves are thin, dry and usually brownish in color. They protect the axillary bud in its axil. Number six, reproduction. The margin of the leaf, fleshy leaf of Priophyllum bears adventitious buds. When these leaves fall on the ground, the buds germinate into new plants. This type of reproduction is called vegetative propagation. Next is the flower, which is the reproductive organ of the plant. Structure of a flower. This is a pedicel, which is a green color stalk. then this one is receptacle all the other parts of flower are arranged in four whorls the first whorl is of green sepals second is colorful petals third is 
stamen which is a male reproductive part fourth is carpal or pistil which is a female reproductive part of the flower stamen consists of a long stalk called filament and a swollen head called anther it consists of numerous very small pollens which are male reproductive cells it still consists of a sticky structure called stigma attached to a long tube like structure called style and style ends in a swollen part called ovary and this ovary contains the female reproductive cells called ovules now let's see what is pollination pollination is a process by which pollen is transferred from the anther that is the male part to the stigma which is the female part of the plant that by enabling the process of fertilization and reproduction in turn now let's see how pollination occurs or how pollen reach stigma there are various ways how do pollens reach the stigma flowers have bright petals and strong fragrance that attract insects and other animals flowers have thin nutritious honey like liquid called nectar inside them that acts as food for many insects the flies bees and many other insects feed on the nectar so they visit the flower to suck nectar while sucking nectar from the flower they are in no way harmed by the insects in and insects feed on the nectar present in the flowers and while doing so the pollen from the anther gets attached to the body of the insects and when this insect visits another flower from nectar pollen gets to the sticky top from the pistils and by the way of long tubes called style pollen reach the ovary where ovules are present and fertilization occurs leading to the formation of seeds so this process of pollen reaching the sticky tops of pistils is called pollination and pollen may reach to the stigma of the same flower or stigma of the different flower when pollen reach to the stigma of the same flower it is called self pollination when pollen reach stigma of different flower of same kind it is called cross pollination now we will learn about different agents of pollination insects like bees butterflies beetles etc are the main agents of pollination birds and mammals too pollinate some flowers wind also acts as an agent of pollination water too acts as an agent of pollination when pollen from the anther of stamen joins with the ovules present in the ovary we call it fertilization let's revise when pollen from the anther of the stamen joins with the ovules present in the ovary it is called fertilization and fertilization forms the seeds inside the ovary and after fertilization this ovary changes into a fruit that's why seeds are there inside the fruit now there are two types of fruit true fruit and false fruit true fruit is the fruit that is formed from the fertilized ovary of the flower and ovules get transformed into the seeds example mulberry fig pineapple grapes mango false fruit arise from other floral parts than the ovary example apple pineapple and banana parts of a fruit there are three main parts of a fruit in addition to the seed 
these are epicarp, mesocarp, and endocarp. Epicarp or exocarp is the outermost covering, which is skin of the fruit. Mesocarp, this is the middle fleshy portion of the fruit. And endocarp, it is the inner stony wall of the fruit, which can be shown in the figure. Now, functions of the fruit. Number 1. Fruits help to protect the seeds from the adverse condition. Number 2. Fruits help in dispersal of seeds. Number 3. Fruits store food and are good sources of vitamins. The seed The ovules after fertilization develop into seeds. A seed is made up of seed coat and an embryo. The embryo is made up of radical and embryonal axis and one as in wheat, maize, or two cotyledons as in gram and p structure of dicotyledonous seed the outermost covering of a seed is the seed coat the seed coat has two layers the outer testa and the inner tegmen the hilum is a scar on the seed coat through which the developing seeds were attached to the fruit. Above the hilum is a small pore called the micropyle. Within the seed coat is the embryo, consisting of an embryonal null axis and two cotyledons. The cotyledons are often fleshy and full of reserve food materials. At the two ends of the embryonal axis are present the radical and the plumule. In some seeds, such as castor, the endosperm formed as a result of double fertilization is a food storing tissue. In plants, such as bean, gram, and pea, the endosperm is not present in mature seeds, and such seeds are called non endospermous structure of mon monocotyledonous seed generally monocotyledonous seeds are endospermic but some are as in orchids are non endospermic in the seeds of cereals such as maize the seed coat is membranous and generally fused with the fruit wall the endosperm is bulky and stores food. The outer covering of endosperm separates the embryo by a proteinaceous layer called alluron layer. The embryo is small and situated in a groove or at one end of the, uh, end of the endosperm. It consists of one large and shield-shaped cotyledon known as cotylum and short axis with a plumule and a radical. The plumule and radical are enclosed in sheath which are called coleoptile or chlorioriza respectively. Now what is seed dispersal? The scattering of seeds from a plant over a wide area is called seed dispersal. Seed dispersal occur in five ways. Number one, dispersal by the wind. Number two, dispersal by animals. Number three, dispersal by water. Number four, dispersal by bursting or explosive mechanism and number five dispersal by humans germination of seeds germination is the process of formation of a seedling from the embryo immediately after it is formed the embryo remains in a dormant stage in this stage all parts mature then the seedling comes out there are two types of germination in apical germination the hypocotyl elongates before the apicotyl and the so, the cotyledons are pushed above the ground. The seed absorbs water and swells up. The radical grows downwards to form the root system. It is seen in the bean seed. In hypogill germination, the apicotyl elongates first and the cotyledons remain underground. The grain imbibes water and swells up. The radical comes out through its protective sheath called coleoriza and grows down to form the root system. But it dies off soon. New adventitious roots come out from the base of the stem. The plumule also comes out of the coleoptile and elongates to form the root system. 
it is seen in May screen. Conditions required for germination are water, suitable temperature and right amount of oxygen is needed for germination of seeds. Last topic, parthenogenesis. It is the special type of reproduction in which an organism develops into a new individual without undergoing fertilization. Example, mucor, works. That's it. Chapter is complete. Thank you for watching.